Football clubs here are a unique part of their community, more so, I think, than in any other part of the world. Welcome to Football Hurts, the show dedicated to the blood, sweat and cheers of the game we all love and hate. In this programme, we're taking a look back at the dramatic season of AFC Wimbledon. The club started by the fans, for the fans, in their bid for promotion into England's Football Conference, just two tiers away from the Football League. But the bizarre and miraculous story of Wimbledon football really begins back in the 1960s. I think in the context of, of the history of British football, any description of, of what happened to, to Wimbledon Football Club would have to start with the words, what the bloody hell happened there then? This shabby little club went from non-league football to the upper reaches of the top table of the Football League to winning the FA Cup final at Wembley against Liverpool, possibly the most famous club in the world at the time. Lifting the trophy to, to our fans was, was some, some feeling. To us, it was it really meant something deep down. It was one family unit. It was a family club, and that made the club so special. And uh, I never had that with any other club. After five years in the first division, Plough Lane's tiny capacity of 8,000 was considered too small for life in the newly formed Premiership. Club management decided that a ground share with Crystal Palace would be more appropriate. And I remember at the time there were demonstrations about moving to Sellers, but the thing was Sellers was all-seater and Premier League needed an all-seater stadium, didn't it? And that was the reason why it was done. But I thought since then the, the club lost their identity. Proposals for a return to Wimbledon petered out amidst local politics and property deals. And with the increasing financial difficulties, the future of the club was becoming ever more uncertain. We just, we just weren't getting the gates in, we, we, we weren't getting the kind of the sponsorship deals that the other bigger clubs were getting. And the only way really that we could con continue operating in the Premiership was by, by selling our best players. And Sam and Mann sold, this, uh, sold the club to the Norwegian people. But what happened next would become one of the most controversial incidents in English football. We'd been at Sellers Park for 10 years. That's when everyone started getting letters and, and, and so on um, to say that the club was moving to Milton Keynes. There is no way that it would not be our club. You know, nobody else would stand for, for that kind of distance. That's like moving Leeds to Middlesbrough. I had from the very early days that whole notion of someone's trying to kill this football club and we've got to stand up to them. The supporters organised themselves for yet another round of protests, but did their activities have any influence? It all came to a head in the end when the FA got involved um, and decided to pass judgement on whether the club could or couldn't move to Milton Keynes. We, of course, contested it shouldn't be able to. You've got that horrible feeling that the worst thing is going to happen, but you can't make yourself believe it until it does. Amazingly, the tribunal ruled two to one to allow the move to Milton Keynes. You're bereft. The thought of your football club not being there just leaves you speechless, you know. The only conclusion was go home and take your own life dressed in your favourite football shirt or, as a few of us came up with, start another football club. Fuck them. You know, we can, we can, we'll, do, we'll do it again. We did it before. It was, you know, the combined effort of people from around here who got Wimbledon, a football club, into, into the Football League. Uh, to the FA Cup final and, and, and as FA Cup winners. It's not about whether we're at Sellers Park or whether we're at Plough Lane, it's about whether we've got a club that we believe is a Wimbledon football club. It doesn't matter whether we lose 5-0 in, in a park on a Sunday, if it still feels like Wimbledon football club to us and we all still feel the same thing, it's that shared emotion. Within three months of the tribunal decision, Wimbledon supporters did indeed start again. It was 3,000 people getting together and acting in unison that made this whole movement special. It's just such a good community spirit. It's the spirit I remember as a nine-year-old playing football in a car park at Plough Lane. We've got that back. The big bit as well that the FA Commission said that was whilst it would be feasible for a club such as Wimbledon Town to be formed, it was, and here's the famous quote, not in the interest of football. Um, you know, I, I can't see how a fan-run club by the fans who wanted it themselves and said it was the right thing wouldn't be in the interests, but you know, I think that's that's one thing that drives us on every time. 
Oh, yeah. you know, we want to we want to prove it wrong. But the romance of a new supporter-owned club would become worthless unless a legal framework could be found. The answer was a supporter's trust. The supporter's trust uh, is an industrial providence society, the, the legal form of a co-op. Um, it's really just a, it's a membership organisation, uh, has all the legal protection of a company, uh, but it's based on the principle of one person, one vote. The way the club was set up means that the Don's Trust will always hold the goal take control of our club without the full backing of the trust. If you're a member of the Don's Trust, essentially you're an owner of a football club. Six years on, AFC Wimbledon have remained focused. I actually think that we have three things we're trying to do here. One of these things is get back into the league, and that's, if you like, righting an injustice, the dreadful injustice that was done to this club. The second one is, if we possibly can, and I'm not sure we can, getting back to Merton. And the third one is being a really professional, well-run club. Wouldn't you like to be part of a football club? Most of us would. It's our club, it's my club, and I love it. It's my, it's my biggest passion in life. Since 2002, promotion has been rapid through the Combined Counties League and Isthmian Divisions. Now they sit near the top of the Ryman League Premier Division, just three tiers below the English Football League. With an army of volunteers and regular crowds of 3,000 attending fixtures at their shared home with Kingstonian, AFC Wimbledon are ready to move on up. But after two seasons failing in the playoffs, the Dons are determined to win the championship this year and bag the division's only automatic promotion into the conference. Everybody wants us to get out of this league, uh, all the fans. It's absolutely critical. It's our third year in this league and we should be doing better. We want to do desperately to do better. At the start of the season, the club appointed conference veteran Terry Brown as the new manager. Under his stewardship, they hope to make it up this year. I would say that that's proved harder than I thought. We look back at the highs and lows of Wimbledon's struggle for promotion, next on Football Hurts. Following two seasons of semi-final disappointments, the Dons brought in manager Terry Brown and assistant Stuart Cash to get promotion this year. And with a wealth of experience behind them, expectations of the pair were high. Terry Brown's doing, uh, doing a great job in his experience manager. He's brought some great players in. We had a poor start of the season because of, um, we had about eight or nine new players in the side, so um, once they start to gel together and know each other, we're, we're getting from strength to strength. Both Stuart and I were lucky enough to leave a club, Aldershot, that have, have, have got into the Football League this year, and this is an identical club for fan base, and it's a fans club. And the first year you're here, they're saying, OK, you've done it before, so what, do it for us. Once Terry Brown was appointed, I was expecting a good season and I was expecting we'd be in the playoffs and hopefully promotion. We looked at keeping as many of the existing squad as we could and um, we probably kept half that squad and brought in people that we knew. I was already at Hayes when, when Terry took the job there and, uh, and obviously we had a great, great uh, camaraderie amongst the lads and we, we did really well. I work as a, an operations manager um, for a facilities management company. My, my bosses uh, are very uh, football-minded. They understand the conference and uh, and below, and uh, you know they, they allow me to, to to play my football and enjoy it. Jason Goodliffe's circumstances are not unique. Players in the Ryman League come from a variety of football backgrounds, but almost all are part-time, balancing daytime work with their club commitments. AFC Wimbledon centre half. Anthony Howard. I work as a document controller. It's just regular pubs, clubs and ordinary girls for us. Other members of the new squad came from much higher levels of football. I think you said they've got uh, the potential. Well, they will be. I believe they'll be in the, in the league within five years. Everything's in place. They've got, as you said, the fans are the major factor, really. After a long career, including Spurs and Motherwell, Steve Ferguson joined the Dons last year. You know, people said when I left Woking, you know, I, I said a quote in the paper that I'm, I'm going down two leagues, but I feel like I'm going forward in my career. Summertime in Marbella or something, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do At that, 37, that. former Wimbledon FC legend Marcus Gale is juggling his business commitments to play out his last season with the newly formed AFC. 
been happy with my career. Uh, it's going to come to an end pretty soon. Uh, I won't be looking forward to it. I don't know how I'll deal with it, but um, all good things have to come to an end. Nearly 10 players joined Terry Brown at the start of the season in a concerted effort to get Wimbledon promoted into the conference. We brought in people that we knew, uh, specifically to really um, try and get us out of the Ryman League in the first attempt. And, uh, uh, you know, I would, I would say that, that that's proved harder than I thought. Didn't get into it in, until the second half, really. And by then, it's too warm and a bit too late as well. You can see everyone's a bit deflated, no one's happy with the point. I would describe the season as a roller coaster season. A, a real roller coaster. Oh god, it was it's been really hard work and very frustrating. Lots of highs, lots of lows, some good performances, a few bad performances. There's been stop-start, stuttering. Every time we got on a run, something went wrong, we couldn't score goals. It was immensely frustrating. You know, two games in, if you're not doing very well, you start thinking the season's gone wrong already. And some chap threw his season ticket at me. We're like three games into the season, rubbish brown, like, boshed the season ticket at me. I think, we're three games in, like, behave yourself, really. Um, and that's the expectation level. Halfway through the season, fans' expectations were fulfilled as AFC Wimbledon moved from mid-table to third. But to reach first place and secure that elusive automatic promotion, a steady run of wins would be required. Not easy in a notoriously volatile league. Here goes Archer now down the left-hand side, taking on the Don's defence, cutting inside and going for goal. Oh, and what a goal by Leon Archer, who hits the bullseye with an arrowing shot to leave the Don's quivering. I was a little bit surprised at, at how much we struggled this season and I can generally put it down to one thing. We dropped 18 points to the bottom four. If we'd have took them 18 points, we'd have probably won the league. Now, you might drop a few points for the bottom teams, but to lose twice to Boreham Wood, lose twice to East Thurrock, lose and draw with Folkestone and draw with Leighton is not good enough. Oh, it's 2-1 and incredibly East Thurrock United look as though they're going to leave Kings Meadow with all three points. Losing games here at East Thurrock, we, we had a stat count, I think we had 15 shots on target, they had two and they beat us 2-1. It makes you focus as a manager, jolt you into uh, ensuring that you don't sit on your backside and say, oh, well, we won, we'll be OK next year, we'll add a couple of faces. No, we need a drastic overhaul. The players that Terry Brown and Stuart Cash have bought in, sometimes they've been bought in to do a specific job, and they have all done that job so well. Hoping to catch Chelmsford City now with a 15-point lead, Terry Brown brought in more talent up front. And he squares it for John Main, and that's the opening goal for AFC Wimbledon, just eight minutes gone, and Tunbridge Angels left on standby as the Dons get plugged in to Main's power. John is a real non-league diamond. Uh, we paid a lot of money for John from Tunbridge uh, based on his goal scoring record at this level and it's second to none, it's almost a goal a game. Oh and there's John Main with his fifth goal for the Dons. And for the second time this afternoon John Main bites the hand that used to feed him. We've come to the conclusion with Mainy, Mainy you go where you like because Mainy has an an instinct, a knack that you can't coach. He's got a natural ability to be in the right place at the right time. So we've changed it in the last few months where we say to the other forwards, you make your runs off of Maney. Because I'd put my house on Maney being in the right place at the right time and finish. And he takes on McFarlane and he beats him. Comes up against John Purdy now. Still main, takes on Purdy. And also plays the ball beyond Dale Brightley. Oh, it's a fantastic goal. We had a few setbacks that we really could have done without. John Main getting injured when he did. 
really was bad timing and hurt us quite badly. Barely two thirds the way through the season, disaster struck. I knew straight away it was a, it was a break, just feel it. You feel the pain for a few seconds and then it normally goes away. But uh, yeah, that one weren't going away and I uh, couldn't run it off, so I knew it was a break. We had John Main injured with a broken metatarsal and uh, we didn't think we'd have him back for the rest of the season. We just got him back for the playoff semis. There's been a lot of players used. There's been a lot of players used. We, we expected that to, um, to be the case because obviously when you come into the club in your first season, you tend to use more players than what you actually, you know, you should do. Trust me, we brought two new boys in who I'd like to welcome. We brought Ramon in and we brought uh, Louis in to, to liven us up a bit, really. We've got a boy called Louis Cumbers from uh, Gillingham. He's got real quality on the ball. He's clever and an intelligent player. And uh, he made a world of difference. He scored goals as well. We brought a boy called Ramon Rose in. The boy Ramon Rose is as quick as I've ever worked with. Got a great strike and him brave. Uh, and has now been drafted into Queen's Park Rangers first team at the end of the season. So that shows how well he's done. I'm looking to bring another midfielder in as well. We bring Robin Shroop back, who I must say has had rave, rave reviews from everybody. The fact that he got Harrow Borough Player of the Month as well tells you that we've got some competition for places and some of you need to pull your fucking finger out and make sure we turn draws and losses into some wins. Following the additions to the squad, Wimbledon arrived at 18th place Haybridge on the back of four consecutive wins. But the Ryman League has a habit of throwing up a few surprises. Oh, <laughs> the loss at Haybridge was, uh, um, it was freezing cold. It was damp, miserable, and it just feels in a kind of Stephen King country, really, for me. But now up at the other end, here goes Steve Ferguson for the Dons on the right-hand side, crosses it into the middle, Webb goes for it and it breaks loose, it's Lewis Cumbers, and just four minutes gone, it's 1-0 to the Dons, and Lewis Cumbers for the fourth game in the row, finds the net for the Dons. 1-0 up, cruising, we were flying back towards the top of the league at that time. Here's Gillespie now though for Haybridge Swifts, all to the edge of the area, taken on now by Reggie Savage, shot comes in, oh it's there! And the man who was on loan at AFC Wimbledon earlier this season returns to haunt the Dons with the equaliser for Haybridge Swifts. They equalised and I still thought, oh, we'll just go and get a winner here. We, we, we've been on fire recently, we'll carry on. And then they scored. Here's Reggie Savage, he's clear of the Dons' defence. Great chance for 2-1. Oh, it's another fabulous finish. And for the second time this afternoon, it's a goal for the former Dons' loanee. 2-1 to Haybridge Swifts. And once again, the Dons was savaged by Reggie. That was when, really, that was when the damage was done as far as winning the league title was concerned. After that game, everyone kind of thought, Ugh. People on the Don's Trust board are pissed off, fans are pissed off, everybody's pissed off, so uh, why not interview a pissed off manager as well? <laughs> if, you got, if I got on the website most times of the year, I'm being absolutely wasted, whether I'm whatever club you're at. As a player, you can hide amongst ten others. You can say, I played well when the team lost. As a manager, everybody looks at you and says, team lost, it's your fault. There's a famous saying in football, players win games, managers lose them. And um, the hurt of losing for a manager is as bad as it gets. When you first go into management, it's fantastic because you're so full of enthusiasm and new ideas and, um, and you're young, which is nice. As you get older, you, you, you realise that there's, there's just as many bad Sundays as there are good Sundays. You come back in Monday and the only person that can lift the staff at the club, the players at the club, even the office staff at the club is the manager. If I look at why I do it and answer your question, it is also my job. So it pays my mortgage, uh, feeds me kids, puts me daughter through uni. Um, and let's be fair about it, if I didn't have this job I'd have to work for a living. Despite the setbacks, Wimbledon would come within eight points of division leaders Chelmsford City. The Dons then travelled to their Essex rivals in an attempt to close the gap yet further. Coming up next.
One highlight of the Wimbledon season was historical. After six years of careful negotiation by supporter group Wizza, the Wimbledon FC patrimony was returned to its Merton home from the MK Dons. We were able to get Milton Keynes to come to the table to help negotiate uh, the return of history and honours to the community in which it belongs. Well, I think it draws a line in the sand, doesn't it? I mean, um, for me, the minute they left Plough Lane and went to Sellers, um, Wimbledon wasn't the same club. So it's nice now that the, the memorabilia, the patrimony has um, come back to the borough where the team was formed. This is our battle honours. You know, it's like when you walk around a war museum and you see, you know, battle dresses and flags with sort of famous battles on and stuff, and that's kind of what this sort of thing is. If you don't have an identity, you can't, you can't move forward. And I think with the honours and everything coming back, it gives everybody at the club now something to build upon and to try and climb to those dizzy heights again. Listen. With the Don's history safely back in the borough, AFC Wimbledon manager Terry Brown began planning for the future, looking towards the young talent inside the club. Uh, most of the boys are played through the uh, coming through the youth academy. Um, they're playing up in the reserves with me for the last three or four months. So I'm looking for a bit of pace, a bit of touch, power, and uh, reading the game. Anthony, Anthony, you go right side. Kenny goes left. We've got some big decisions to make, as in who we keep for next year and who yeah. we don't. And uh, I'm looking for the trialist to say, are they head and shoulders above what my uh, my current youngsters are, and to give me a gauge for next year that who can maybe um, step up, the Luke Pigdens, the Stevie Gilbert, step up into my first team squad next year. And uh, both of them, have, I think, have, have proved that they're ready to do that. Luke Pigden uh, has just signed a contract for us. Well done, Wood. Well done, Wood. It was literally a, a two-month space where I was going from reserves and then and then a little bit and then I was fully in the first team. Um, the kit and everything, so yeah, it was mad. Next year we'll want to play a lot more football than we played this year, and we'll, we'll do that with the younger side. Next year it will be about building a side that can take us uh, over maybe the next two or three years. After a struggle to reach second place, Wimbledon prepared to face the leaders Chelmsford City, only eight points away. We're struggling to face the clubs that throw a lot of money around because we haven't got that much money. We don't, we're not the highest payers in the division. We have invested quite heavily in the uh, playing staff and the support staff for them. Uh, and I think if you're in a fortunate position to, to do that and get it right, you, you've got a reasonable chance of going up. We know we have to go there and win the game. If we get a draw or they beat us on Saturday, you know, you can more or less say that the title's over. I would love to stuff them, um, you know, particularly as that would give us, uh, you know, such a, almost an unassailable lead. Well, it doesn't get any bigger than this. The top two in the division going head to head. Here goes Lewis Cumbers now. Clark on the receiving end and Cumbers goes for goal. Oh, it's narrowly over that crossbar. Corner to Chelmsford City. And it comes now from the right-hand side. It's Andy Dunker with the header. Oh, it's 1-0 to Chelmsford City. One captain out jumps the other. So with half-time rapidly approaching here at Melbourne Park, long clearance forward then by Chelmsford keeper Danny Gay. Spreads it through. Here's Bertie Braley now taking on the Don's defence and letting the shot go. Oh, it's narrowly past that far post. And even at this early stage, that could have been an unassailable lead for Chelmsford City. So despite plenty of possession, the Don's go in a goal down at the break. It's 1-0 to Chelmsford City. So the Dons then get the second half underway and immediately they're on the attack down the right-hand side. Here's substitute Steve Ferguson now, forward for Laval. That's a fine interception and it's a throw-in now for AFC Wimbledon. Ferguson specialises in these long throws, and here goes another one into the area. Oh, and Steve Clark, what on earth was he playing out there? He's chested the ball into his own net. It's one all, and the Dons have been gifted an equaliser. It's Chelmsford 1, AFC Wimbledon 1. And there's going to be another throw into AFC Wimbledon, and it comes from Ferguson. Oh, it's hit the arm of Dean Palmer, and incredibly, that's a penalty to AFC Wimbledon. Ten minutes to go, a moment that could prove pivotal in the destiny of this season's title. And he's found the back of the net with an excellent penalty. Chelmsford City in the closing stages now find themselves chasing an equaliser. Defending now to do for the Dons. Here goes Braley into the area. He's gone down under challenge from Marcus Gale and the referee now has given a penalty to Chelmsford City. 
right now, just two minutes after falling behind. Chelmsford with a great chance to equalise. And Ricky Holmes has driven the ball home. No chance for James Pullen. The two sides back on level terms. It's Chelmsford 2, AFC Wimbledon 2. So inside the final five minutes then here at Melbourne Park. Chance for them to push forward again. Good turn there by Chris Duffy down the left-hand side. Pushing on towards the Don's penalty area. And he's threaded a good ball through for Burkez now. Great chance to deliver a cross. And it goes towards a far post. Knocked down by Palmer. It's Bertie Braley. And it's 3-2 to Chelmsford City. And having looked down and out when they were 2-1 down, is that the goal that's going to mean the championship? And there goes the final whistle. It's finished 3-2 to Chelmsford City, who are surely now favoured to the Ryman Premier Division title. Meanwhile, the Don's dreams of promotion could once again rest in the uncertainty of the playoffs. With the championship title well beyond their reach, the Dons dug in for second place. But as the end of the season approached, Wimbledon hit yet another run of worrying results. There's a chance here for Lee Fowle into the penalty area, one-on-one -on -one with Pullen, and it's 4-2 to Horsham. And there goes the final whistle. And for the first time since their formation in 2002, AFC Wimbledon suffered back-to-back -back home league defeats. That was absolutely <laughs> shocking. should all be ashamed of themselves putting their shirt on today because that was absolute garbage. All we've ever asked for as Wimbledon supporters is 100% effort, 100%, and we're not getting that. We're on TV! Well, listen to them, they're in the playoffs, yeah? Listen to them. Listen to them, enjoying it. Listen to them. Listen to them and watch them. Listen. While Wimbledon's performance is faltered, on form Staines Town eventually squeezed through to finish in second place. They would face Ramsgate in their playoff semi final, and the Dons would play host to AFC Hornchurch. While Chelmsford City sailed automatically into the Blue Square South, the playoff final would be Wimbledon's last chance at promotion. I don't eat before playoffs, I don't sleep before playoffs. So last year I cried all the way home from Bromley. <sighs> so many times we've been in that must win game, you know, Chelmsford. At Chelmsford, if we won that, we could have still gone to the title and we blew it, you know. We seem to be able to kick ourselves in the foot at the worst time, so can't help but be nervous because I know what we like. I joined last year ago and we, we had played Bromley in the playoffs and it's a one-legged affair, so you've basically you've got to get your, you've got to keep, and last year we, we had a man sent off. And you could just see it was like it was in slow motion, it was like, no, here we go again. Yo, what chance do we stand down to 10 men? The players look completely desolate, like they'd failed. I mean, they were literally walking around the side of the pitch, shaking hands, apologising to the fans. It was, you know, devastating and absolute despair. And I, to be honest, I, I couldn't deal with that again this year. And we just got to make sure we do what's necessary and get the result we require for us, the team, and you know, the fans as well. Every season, staking our claim to say we have to go up this year. You know, we'd even got rid of a manager who finished us in the semi-finals of the playoffs because we didn't go up. So you could see that the whole club mantra was promotion or bust sort of thing. Right. Let's nail it. Playoffs are a relatively uh, new phenom phenomenon. Distribute it nice and early, yeah? Not I said to Eric, Eric, I need loads and loads of cover. Now, I might not need it, I might not have to call on it, but I need it. We were able to go out and go, Good. OK, we'll get Move in um, three loan players, a couple of scholars. Options. It might cost an extra 3000 and well spent. But that's a lesson well learned, and it's a lesson that, um, that I would always use again because playoffs are part and parcel of football now. Just stop them, and I guarantee we will kill them if we can just switch play like that. Have the confidence to play them, yeah? Well done. You know, before the game and that, you, you, you feel all the butterflies, but that's, that's the games you relish, that's the games you, you want to be involved in. Make or break time within this week, it's the biggest week of the club's history so far. Wimbledon would play AFC Hornchurch in their playoff semi-final. I'm a bit confident because I've drank a few beers. So after almost nine months of honest endeavour in their league matches, it now comes down to this, the playoff semi-finals, AFC Wimbledon against AFC Hornchurch. Good played forward by Goodliffe, here's John Main now. 
Oh, but that's a disappointing pass, though. Looking for one of his colleagues, but it was intercepted there by AFC Hornchurch. Another chance for them to break for, down towards the left-hand side. Here's Chris Lee now, out towards the left. Dean Green, the goal scorer from Saturday, taking the ball on, but that's a fine sliding interception there by Jake LeBeau. Here's Tony Finn, taking the ball on towards the left edge of the area, sliding the perfect ball through. Oh, it's Lewis Cumbers. It's his first goal back for the Dons, on loan from Gillingham. It's AFC Wimbledon 1, AFC Hornchurch 0. So the Dons now with a chance to exert more pressure on the Hornchurch defence. In comes a free kick from Garrard. It's Rob Coon with a towering header. Oh, and it was destined for the net, but for a fine fingertip save from Dale Brightley. So here's Ferguson now with a long throw for the Dons. Flicks on by Goodliffe. It's John Main. Oh, it's 2-0 to AFC Wimbledon. And there goes the half-time whistle, and that goal from John Main just three minutes before half-time has put the Dons very much in the driving seat and within touching distance of Saturday's playoff final. So the Dons kick off the second half in a great position, but as we've seen before, a half-time lead at home for them is no guarantee of victory, and they'll need to guard against complacency. So once again, some defending for the Dons to do from this free kick coming in from the left-hand side for Hornchurch. But it's the experienced, calm figure of Marcus Gale who gets the ball clear, then helped into the Hornchurch half by Ferguson. But in the end, it's played all the way back to Dale Brightley. But look at John Main here, looking to charge down the clearance, and that's exactly what he's done. And he's going to get on the end of it as well. Here goes Main, sizing up his opportunities, plays it across the six-yard area. Oh, and he's so unlucky not to set up a chance for Ferguson. Well, AFC Hornchurch still trailing by two goals to nil with around a quarter of an hour to go. But they're still very much in this game. Here goes Mark Janney. Chance to deliver a low cross from the right. And it reaches Harry Elms, the substitute. Oh, and Harry Elms has turned sharply and fired Hornchurch right back into this game. It's AFC Wimbledon 2, AFC Hornchurch 1. Ferguson now plays it forward. And now John Main. Hornchurch overcommitted forward. And now can Main punish them? And he takes on McFarlane and he beats him. Comes up against John Purdy now. Still Main takes on Purdy and also plays the ball beyond Dale Brightley. Oh, it's a fantastic goal. 3-1 to AFC Wimbledon. It's the second of the match for Main. And after two years of losing in the semi-finals, it's third time lucky this evening. AFC Wimbledon are in Saturday's playoff final. And what a fantastic individual goal from John Main. And there goes the final whistle. A night of glory for AFC Wimbledon. And they now advance with Menace to Saturday's playoff final. You can keep your Champions League, you can keep your Premier title. This game on Saturday is bigger than any cup final, any game anywhere else, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely brilliant performance. Uh, chuffed with it. And we know, I've told everybody as we come off, and you all know it, we ain't celebrating like Orsham. We're going to celebrate on Saturday if we earn the right to celebrate. We have produced the goods tonight. One more match to go on Saturday, which we know is going to be tense, now by the You know, we've had a, an up and down season. A bit of inconsistency sort of cost us a little bit this year, but, you know, it's about two games. We're not going to get carried away, can't, because it'd be foolish, so... Um, let's see us after Saturday. <laughs> AFC Wimbledon make a bid for promotion next on Football Hurts. After their success against AFC Hornchurch, the squad get ready for Saturday's playoff final. We prepare properly for the biggest game of the year and the only game that, that matters, it truly is the biggest game of the year now. It's not a you know, manager speak, is it? We put ourselves in a great position to win and even if you look at um, what a fantastic run Staines have had to, to pip us for the post for, for second spot, they've had nine games in the month of April um, and I'm hoping the 10th one might be one game too much. We're going to be disciplined, we're going to be well organised and we go into the final game of the season without an excuse in the world. We've got a fantastic squad of players. I don't want to offer an excuse, I will never offer an excuse because we're going to win on Saturday. My nerves are shot really, I haven't slept, I've gone through every scenario you can, you know. 
having waited almost three years for their first playoff final, Wimbledon arrived at Staines Town knowing this would be the closest they've ever come to conference promotion. I don't know if anyone's ever done anything that makes their bowels relax, but certainly getting into a playoff final does the trick, believe you me. We failed in the playoffs two years in a row. This is the biggest game in our history since we were reformed, so it's so important to us. Right, this is the biggest day of our whole history. Staines are a very, very good side, hence why they finished above us in the league. And um, they play open football like we do, so it's going to be a difficult yeah. game. So for AFC Wimbledon, all in white this afternoon, certainly the biggest game since they were reformed in 2002. So a corner then delivered into the Staines area by Tony Finn. Cleared by the home side as far as Mark Rokaji, but now another chance for the Dons to press forward. Marcus Gale now towards the right-hand side of the area. Partially cleared by Flitter. Chance once again for Marcus Gale. The ball's going to break for Lewis Converse. Oh, that is an absolutely world-class save by James Cornish. Otherwise, the Dons were surely a goal up. Here goes Richard Butler now, looking to inflict some pain upon his former club. And he tries a great ball through to the path of Mark Nokaji. Oh, and a great save by James Pullen. Otherwise, it was the home side who went 1-0 up. Now Jake LeBeau clears it forward. Here goes John Main now. Doing battle with Matt Flitter. Oh, and Main's taking a tumble. Now, what does the referee do here? A real big decision surely now coming up, and one that could influence the rest of the match. What colour will the card be? Oh, and it's a yellow card for the Staines captain. Well, that's certain to cause some controversy. So Marcus Gale then, who's due to retire at the end of this season. And what a way this would be to make his mark on his final game. Oh, but it's just narrowly off target. So now a chance for Staines to pile some pressure on the Don's defence. Here goes Nokaji, taking on Goodliffe. Oh, and going down under challenge as well. That's going to be a free kick to Staines. So another former Don's man, Dave Sargent, to deliver that free kick. Oh, it's deflected so agonisingly and narrowly wide off Jake LeBeau. And here's Andre Scarlett now to deliver the corner. Deep into the six-yard area. Oh, it's 1-0 to Staines Town. And it's their captain, Matt Flitter. The man who was perhaps fortunate to escape a red card earlier on in the half has given first blood to his side. It's Staines Town 1, AFC Wimbledon 0. So there goes the half-time whistle, and despite the magnitude of the occasion and the palpable tension in the air, we've seen a fast, entertaining first half, but it's Staines Town with the all-important goal. They lead AFC Wimbledon by a goal to nil. So as things stand, Staines Town just 45 minutes away from promotion to the Blue Square South, but the Dons will certainly have something to say about that. And now a chance to break into Dons territory. Richard Butler now. Oh, and he's uh, gone down under challenge there from Jake LaBelle. Well, speaking with the referee and protesting his innocence. But he goes into the notebook. It's the second yellow card of the afternoon. So having spent a couple of months on loan with Bromley, Mark de Bolla returns to the Don's side with around 25 minutes to go. James Pullen now to deliver this ball into the Staines half. Flicked on by McDonnell into the path of John Main. Oh, and he's gone down in the area under challenge from Jake Newton. Surely that's a penalty and the linesman on this side is flagging. But no, the referee incredibly has chosen to overrule him. And for the second time this afternoon, John Main is involved in an incident that could have had a serious impact on the outcome of this game. So with 12 minutes to go, it's the last throw of the dice for the Dons. Their third and final substitution, Sam Hatton replaces Rob Quinn. Here's Dave Sargent then with a free kick for Staines Town. Cleared by the Don's defence. McDonald's after this one, but he's going to be beaten to it by Staines captain, Matt Flitter. So Sam Hatton then to deliver a long throw into the Staines penalty area. Keeper James Cornish has gone for the ball. Oh, he's dropped it, and McDonald has squared the ball for Lewis Cumbers. And eight minutes from time, the Don's are back on level terms. It's 1-1. Staines are absolutely furious. They think the goalkeeper was fouled there by McDonald. But it just looked as though he dropped the ball. But we're back on level terms and have the Dons forced extra time. Here goes Jake LeBeau. Ball lofted forward towards the edge of the Staines penalty area. And they've cleared the ball only as far as Sam Hatton. Battling away in midfield. He's done very well to feed it through to Nick McDonald. Tries to turn away from his man, but it's going to be a free kick to AFC Wimbledon. Staines once again not happy with the decision. 
Well, what a vital moment in the game this could turn out to be. And it's the substitute, Mark Dybala, lining up to take it. The referee making sure the wall is 10 yards back. Here goes Dybala. He struck it well. Oh, he struck it very well indeed. It's 2-1 to the Dons, and what a remarkable turnaround in the last three minutes here at Weedshee Park. The Dons now firmly in the driving seat. Dybala showing classic free kick technique there, just as in all the coaching manuals. Up and down, over the wall, and past Staines keeper James Cornish, and bang on the money. Well, you certainly couldn't have scripted the way the game has turned so dramatically on its head in the last couple of minutes. Staines Town must be absolutely shell-shocked at what's happened. Oh, and a handball there by Nick McDonald. Still defending for the Dons to do, a late free kick for them. And it's former Don Lewis Cook to take it. Partially cleared. And goalkeeper James Cornage is forward in the area. He's tried to hook the ball back into the mix. But in the end, he succeeds only in blasting it out for a throw-in. So Luke Garrard then with his throw-in for the Dons. And there goes the final whistle. It's bitter disappointment for Staines Town, but AFC Wimbledon are promoted and will start next season in the Blue Square Conference South. We won it somehow, somewhere we're there. Come for South, here we come. You better be ready for us, because we're ready for them. You know, give it a couple of years and we play MK Dons. Can't be better than that. Can't be better than that. It's brilliant. It was just a total release of, of more than a season full of emotions. And you know, the ups and downs have been severe this year, so it was a total release and total joy. There's very little that has happened to me in my life that could make me feel as happy as that. I'm happy! Football is a very humbling experience as a manager because uh, the playoff final on Saturday, I'm 10 minutes away from being the biggest donut in the world who's wasted a, a year of their lives, or you come back and you're a hero. win the final and be be able to go and lift the trophy was was a very special moment and it's uh, like I say as a captain that's what you want to do the final was like a, a culmination of all the work all the blood sweat and tears that have gone in over the last six years the countless hours that that, that literally hundreds of people have put in it felt like validation of all our efforts I must say, with 10 minutes to go, I turned to Ivor on, on, on Saturday and said, I think it's slipping away, and I was starting to brace myself for saying all the nice things in the boardroom that you don't really mean, and it was nice. So it was not only nice, what a word to use. It was absolutely magnificent that we won, and in such dramatic circumstances. I don't think words can describe what's, what's happened, gone on here today, you know, especially for me as a person, as a player, you know, but as, as a football club, you know, it's a, it's a great day for the club and it's a part of their success to get back in the league. Yeah, great day. <laughs> I said to Mark the Baller after the game, you know, whether he ever kicks a ball in anger for us again. Think of another instance where you could kick a football and completely transform 3,000 people's summers. You know, we're all going to have a brilliant summer now just because he kicked a ball into a net and, and, that, and that, that's football for you, you know. But just three days after scoring the winning goal in the final, Mark de Bolla would be one of 10 players released from the Wimbledon squad as Terry Brown prepared for next season's challenges in the conference. Out of those 20 odd winners that I had all last season and this Saturday in particular, I've had to pick the phone up on Tuesday after Bank Holiday Monday and say, uh, thank you very much for everything you've done, but I'm afraid um, I'm gonna be having to, to release you. It's not been the greatest week as in by doing that, 
but you have to overcome that. And players, really, especially experienced players, the likes of uh, Rob Quinn and, and Fergie, they've, done, they've been there before and they'll realise that's part of being a footballer. It's happened to me in my career. Um, if you see sort of half a squad taken away, then uh, it can be a bit disheartening. But uh, unfortunately, that's, that's football. This week has been the process of starting to talk to new players and, and getting players ready for next season. We are going younger and we are going more, more football orientated than um, strength and aggression. And, um, and, we're, and we're playing the game in a slightly different manner. Round of applause for everybody up here on stage. Next season we're in the, the Blue Square South, <laughs> and or Southern Division even, and um, they've got a lot of teams that I'm looking forward to visiting. I got a very nervy text message off of one of the guys that did a lot of the protesting with us um, when we was in Wizza uh, around the sort of Milton Keynes thing and while we were still at Sellers Park saying, you know, how nervy he was and all that. And I said to him to, to save at the moment because that's why I think we formed the club. We formed the club to shit ourselves for nine hours on a Saturday morning and not for the 2 1 win and the party that followed. You know, in a, in a kind of twisted way, we fought to have a football club that could churn us up that much. The title football hurts. Uh, some summed up this season a lot of the time. Um, I'm now gonna go and enjoy myself for the for the summer and chill out and and get the 2000 Grecian 2000 back and uh, just come back refreshed for the new year. And every morning you wake up and think, yeah, we're still promoted. So yeah, it was a good time. Good time had by all.